check check testing okay um can you just check um, the mic if what you're speaking if it's coming into the thing it, it is working check check okay okay and uh, this thing online when you speak does it come in um <coughs> It is okay. Okay, good, good. Okay, convinced. Okay, I was just wondering whether people were trying to ask questions. Okay, we'll start. Yeah. Okay. We any questions about the prophetic, about uh, hearing from God? Okay. Still any doubts? Can God speak? Okay. So God speaks. You know, God speaks through His Word. We know that ultimate. You know, this is the ultimate communication from God, right? Authority, uh, infallible, authoritative, infallible, perfect comes from the Word of God. The Holy Spirit quickens the Word to us, right? So we always go back to this, right? The Holy Sp God can also speak in an audible voice. Yes or no? Yeah, He can always also speak in an audible voice, and uh, as as He does, He does that. And we also, you know, all these different ways by which the Holy Spirit speaks in a still small voice, in an impression in our heart, and uh, uh, an information that comes to us, which we did not know earlier, or, you know, a scripture that is quickened to us. Quickened means it's like it's made alive suddenly, right? It makes sense to us. There's an emphasis of it. It's highlighted to us. All that are the ways by which the Holy Spirit speaks to us communicates to us okay so so when we say okay the word of the lord came to the prophet how did the word you know it could have come in all these ways right or in an audible way so we see that over and over again um the lord spoke the lord also speaks in dreams visions yes yeah it, it is the language of the spirit we see that so we need to be open um and to all these avenues by which god speaks to us okay so, um, you know, we, we saw in um, 1 Corinthians 14 and 3 that the prophetic word brings forth edification, exhortation, and comfort, right? Um, so let's look at a few, few more things, like what does the prophetic word accomplish, right? So, it's, so when, we, when, we, when we study this, just like how we study the benefit of tongues, right? When we, when we see what does the prof prophetic word bring forth, we see the value of it. We see okay, the importance of it when we see that, okay, God, I really want to know your heart. And right? I really want to hear from you and I do what you want me to do because it brings in so much, so much change, so much uh, you know, value, so much edification for the people. So you know, I want to do this, right? So when we look at, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the notes where you see the prophetic word, okay? the prophetic word, which means what does it bring forth? It brings edification which means spiritual progress, exhortation, and comfort. Okay, we saw in 14.3, 1 Corinthians. Secondly, the prophetic word reveals God's plans and purposes, right? Zacharias, when he, when he prophesies over John, his son, John the Baptist, he prophesies, okay, this is what you will do. You're a forerunner. You will go before him, and you will cry out, and you will do that. He's Basically, he's just communicating, this is what God's plan is for you. God's purpose is for you, right? The plan and purpose of God. Same thing with Saul, right? Ananias went and he laid hands and Saul recovered his sight and all that. But he gave Ananias that information. This is what I want you to do because he will go stand before kings for my sake. He'll be a witness, right? So the plan and the purpose of God is revealed in the prophetic word. Okay, so I'm sure personally also you would have experienced that, right? And I remember the first time I came to All People's Church, right? The first time I came to All People's Church, All People's Church wasn't like this. It was a few people, and we were meeting somewhere, and uh, and I came for the meeting. There were hardly some three or four people there, uh, and uh, came to lead worship from another church. And so the first message that I heard, the very first word, which came was that God is calling you to be a pastor, right? And what was that? That was the heart of God, that was the plan of God, that was the purpose of God, which was revealed in a prophetic word. You know, specifically, if you see, it was a word of 
maybe you can say it was a word of knowledge or you know uh, and prophecy right plan purposes of god god is revealing right so we see that the prophetic word brings forth that what is god's plan for you what is god's purpose for you well he can reveal it in so many other ways but he does that through the prophetic word right it, it causes us to stir up and move in faith first timothy chapter 1 verse 18 right so uh, paul is reminding timothy okay let's look at that verse first timothy chapter 1 okay first timothy chapter 1 and verse 18 what does he say? Okay, can somebody read it? First Timothy chapter one, verse eighteen. Yeah, read it out. Read it out loud. You have a mic or something? You can read it out. You can read it. You read. You read. You have the mic. <laughs> the Lord grant him that he may find mm. mercy from the Lord in the in that day. And you knew First Timothy you know, chapter one, verse eighteen. Sorry, sorry. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies mm. provis provisionally made uh, concerning you, yeah. that by them you may wake the good war face okay so he's saying hey this command this charge i'm giving you this responsibility i'm giving you son timothy according to the prophecies which were made concerning you previously what do you do with those prophecies you take them you use them you fight the good fight of faith spiritual battles are there and you need to use spiritual weapons this prophetic word is a weapon and you use that prophetic word you fight the good warfare with this prophetic word. So, which means we are stirred up, we are encouraged to use that prophetic word in warfare. Right. So, prophetic word used in warfare, we can move in faith. Okay. Provides motivation and strength to carry out God's purposes, God's plans. Right. Um, we see again that in Scripture, it releases God's power, healing, deliverance, breakthrough comes from the along with the prophetic word right um like peter looking at that man who was there he receives he looks at him he sees that he has the faith and he raises him up and he says you know golden silver i don't have but I, what i do have i give you he raises him up and we see that that is the place to receive god's strength god's healing etc there's a deliverance that's come there's a big breakthrough that comes right okay Prophetic word also brings correction and restoration, right? We saw that in King Nathan and how he brought, um, uh, sorry, Prophet Nathan, how he brought um, that correction to King David. It causes conviction, repentance, and turning back to God. You know, especially when we look at John chapter 4, the Lord Jesus having a conversation with the, the woman at the well, right? She was convicted and she repented. And it was, she was actually launched into a kind of a ministry where she went and told everybody, come meet this person, right? Ministry of Evangelists, come meet Jesus. That is what she basically went and said, right? So it was because of that prophetic word. Okay, so conviction, repentance comes. This prophetic word also transforms nations, you know, it, not just individual, but even groups of people when you say nation we're talking about ethnos right we're talking about groups of people geographically um, and it brings about change and ezekiel 37 right we saw we see that god gives ezekiel that vision of those dry bones and he's saying okay these this is the nation of israel and this is what i want you to do or this is what i want you to speak and speak life over them and they will stand up encouraged as a mighty army okay so it brings about so the prophetic word from God brings so much in the lives of people. Okay, it's powerful. Therefore, when we sing prophecies, like when we incorporate worship to be prophetic in nature, okay, so how can we do that? How do you think we can do that? Any thoughts? How can prophecy be? 
part of worship. Um, yeah, but practically, you're saying, how do we, how do we profess it? You know, how do we use it in worship? Yes, you know, if I pray and God gives me a word, I can come and tell you, or I can, you know, I can speak it out. But in worship, how do we do that? Yeah, true. Yeah, but how do we do it in in worship? You know, how do we you know reveal the heart and mind of God in worship? Okay, so see one one thing that we need to understand is the prophetic word need not always be spontaneous and at that moment, right? So God can give a word much in advance. God can speak much in advance. So similarly, when you maybe you're preparing as a leader to lead in worship what do you how do you normally prepare you would pray okay hey, what you know so, okay you some of you lead right in worship and so how do you prepare okay so songs are a part of it right yeah so we, you know typically we would say okay god now what do you want me to share how do what direction does this time, you know, what direction does it need to take? You know, uh, in the sense, you know, what is it that you want to reveal? What is it that you want us to focus on? What do you want to emphasize? Right? So, and when God puts that in the heart, in our hearts, then we know that, okay, the songs can actually emphasize it because the songs are actually enabling us to sing to God, sing to others also, declare something, and it's in the direction in which we are taking. Right? So we ask the Lord, Lord, what is it? What is it that you want us to do? What is it? So the Lord gives us the songs. Right? So it need not be a new song. Right? It need not be something brand new, something anyone has not, no one has heard. It need not be. But it can also be that. Right? But it can also be some known song, something which is already written, but God puts it in your heart and says, okay, you sing that. You use this. Right? I want this to be the direction. I want repentance to be the direction. I want you know, a, a proclamation, celebration, rejoicing. I want that to be the direction. Okay, So this direction can change, we know, during the time of worship as well. Right? So... So, which means when we're praying, God can give that word, God can give that direction, and that is, in a way, we say, you know, it is prophetic because God is speaking that and God is putting that in your heart and He's saying, hey, this is what I want done. Right? This is what I want sung, this is what I want done. Right? So, this is something that can happen. And also, at the time when we are, yeah, okay, uh, Saubhagya Lakshmi says, write a song, yes. So that is also something which is, you know, God puts a song, you write it, you sing it, right? And when you come and when we, you know, let's say in a corporate setting, maybe alone also, when you want to sing to the Lord, God's, God puts certain things in your heart to sing out, to declare out, right? A song to the Lord out of the fullness of your heart, and right? you feel inspired to sing out something, and the Holy Spirit is putting these words, putting these promises, putting these verses even, in which you're singing out. Right? Now that is powerful, because it's it's breaking something, you know, all that we saw, what the prophetic word can do, the prophetic song can also accomplish. Right? So, the prophetic song, it's, it could be a song to the Lord, okay? like we see. It could be a spontaneous song. It could be a song of adoration. It could be a, it could be a song to the Lord. It could be a thank song of thanksgiving. It could be a song of repentance. It could be a powerful, you know, declarative song to the Lord. So, what do you, what do we mean when we say song to the Lord? When we say song to the Lord, what does that mean? So we, we are basically, we are actually telling him. We are telling him. right? We are, we are not telling people, but we are telling him. So it's a song to the Lord. Right? So it's a song to the Lord. So we are telling him, Lord, this is who you are. But the fact is, 
interesting thing is the Holy Spirit is giving revelation about who God is because he knows the Father, he knows the Son. And so he is giving revelation in our heart. Revelation meaning information in our heart to sing to him, about him, to him. But he's giving the words. And you, you yourself are thinking, oh, I never thought of God like that. I never, I never dreamed of this. I never thought of this. I never I pre I never pre-planned to sing this. But then here I am, I'm singing it, and it fits in well. And I you know I just feel that joy of the Lord, that assurance of the Holy Spirit. And I see that there is there is some edification that's happening. Right? A song to the Lord. The words, the ideas. The melody, even you know, the Lord puts it in our heart. Okay, Psalm 33, verse 3 says, Sing to the Lord a new song, now, something that is fresh, something that is not heard before. Sing to the Lord a new song. Okay, uh, Psalm 40 and verse 3 also, He has put a new song in my mouth. Okay, and uh, uh, you know, the songs which Moses sang, uh, Moses wrote down, we see in Deuteronomy 31, right. Now, therefore, write down this song for yourself, God says. So what is he doing? He's actually giving. He's giving instruction. He's saying, now, write down this song for yourselves and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the children of Israel. Therefore, Moses wrote this song the same day and taught it through the children of Israel. Okay, so, so we see God you know, explicitly doing that. He's giving a song. He's saying, you teach it to the children of Israel. You shall put it in their mouths, which means they, you make them sing. right? So he's, the Lord is doing it. And we see this. right? So a song to the Lord. So it can be a song to the Lord. We wait on God. We hear from God. We sing it. Okay? And it can be a song to the people also, which means a song of encouragement to the people. Okay? Where God says, you know, this is who you are to me. You are precious. You are holy. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You know, and all these things, you are a work, workmanship of God, and all these things that it's an exhortation to the people. It's an encouragement to the people. Okay, so that can also be something that is that can be a prophetic song. And an encouragement and exhortation to the people. Okay. Thirdly, we see that it can be a Song of declaration over the powers of darkness, right? Over the powers of darkness, saying, you know, the chains are broken. We break down those chains. We break down those walls. We break down those warrior, uh, you know, barriers. We are we are moving forth. You know, we are ex we are taking that step. We are advancing, and things like that. A prophetic declaration during the time of worship in song, and so we see the power of that. Right, where the walls are broken down and chains are broken and God's you know freedom and liberty is released and so on. Right. So again, just to reiterate that the prophetic song can be something that is that God can give well in advance, or it can be something that is spontaneous, that is at that moment and is something unrehearsed, but it is something that you can release. Okay. So here are some practical things, right? Some practical things. How can I prepare myself to prophesy in song, to have prophetic worship? Okay. Definitely, we need prayer and the word of God. Prayer which sensitizes us to hearing from God. Right? It's going to be praying in the spirit, just praying, developing that relationship with God, that closeness, that intimacy with God. So because prophecy is hearing God, right? Hearing his voice. Now, how can I hear his voice if I'm not used to having that as part of my lifestyle, where I'm speaking to him and having him speak to me? Right? So, prayer is preparation for the prophetic. Right? Prayer is preparation for the prophetic. So, we become more aware as we speak and as we hear from him. Okay? Our senses, our spirit senses, are getting sharper and sharper. Okay, are you, have you started studying about the gifts of the Spirit in the Holy Spirit class? Yeah, you've started, you know. So you, you learned about the, you know, hearing from hearing the voice of God. You know, you have the spirit man, and you from the natural senses and from the Holy Spirit, you receive your spirit man receives it and your soul, right? It processes it. 
Now, your spirit man becomes even more sensitive as you pray, you know, as we pray, as we spend time in prayer. And the word of God. Why the word of God? Because the word of God is our reference point. Word of God is our boundary. Word of God actually tells us, hey, these are thought God's thoughts and these are not God's thoughts. You know only when you study the word of God and when you know the heart of God, the character, nature of God. right? So God will not tell you to go rob a bank and give the money to the poor. right? So you know that's not the heart of God because Psalm 23, we see that he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So God is leading, God is speaking, God is leading you to say something, God is leading you to do something. But how is he leading? What is that path? It's a path of righteousness. Righteousness is the very nature of God, doing the right thing, doing the holy the thing that is holy and pure and integrity. So he leads us in paths of righteousness for his own name's sake. You know, maybe we should look at that verse, Psalm 23. Um, this is how he leads, right? So that's a very important thing. You know, he leads me, Psalm 23, verse 3, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. For his name's sake. What does that mean? This is who he is, right? This is his name. His name is Holy, Holy Spirit. His name is Righteous. Right, he's Yehovah Sidkenu, which means he's the righteous God. Right, so for his name's sake, he leads me in paths of righteousness. He's a righteous God. He's a holy God. So he leads me in paths. So, word of God is important with prayer because it gives us the reference point. So we know why do we say test the word with the word, test every prophetic word. Because it tells us that God will not do that. Because God is his heart, his character. That's not what I see in scripture. God doesn't do that. Right? So the stealing, killing, destroying, hey, that's not God. Jesus himself said that he has come to give life and life in its fullness. So that's not there. Hey, all this putting of fear and uh, you know, this crippling fear in man uh, in the in, in, in you know in and calling it prophecy, a hey, in three days, you know, you are going to die. That's not prophecy. You know, even if, you know, there's a word of knowledge, you know, you better take care of yourself because otherwise you're going to get... It comes in a redemptive manner, right? The heart and nature of God is to redeem. Even when, even in warning, even in judgment, there is a redemptive heart of God. So, so you know that, hey, that's not God. It's not God's intent to cripple me with fear so that, you know, it says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So this is who God is. This is what God does. And so you reject, right? And you yourself, you also, you know, when you're releasing prophecy, there is a check that is happening. here. This is God. This is not God. And that happens when we intentionally saturate ourselves with the word of God. Right? That's why we see in scripture, you know, be... Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It says, hey, without limits, abundantly, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And then if you see, so that you can, you know, it talks about speaking one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to the Lord. So there's a word of God and then there's the overflow of that, finding expression in songs, hymns, spiritual songs, prophetic songs even, right? So that's, that's a preparation, right? Praying in tongues. Again, helps. It brings sensitivity to the heart of God. You know, Romans five, Romans eight talks about that, right? Um, uh, twenty six, I think, twenty five, twenty six, where it says that we don't know what we should pray for, but the Spirit of God prays through us that perfect prayer, right? In in with groanings which cannot be uttered. So, which in groanings which cannot be uttered, which means. You know, these are not articulate speech, not articulate words, but these are groanings, these are groanings of the Spirit. And so we don't know what we should pray for, the direction, but then the Spirit of God, when we pray in the Spirit, yes, there is a knowing that happens, right? So 
praying in tongues helps us, makes us sensitive to the direction, to the will, to the heart of God. Okay, We know praying in tongues edifies us. Personally, we are built up. So we pray in tongues, pray in tongues all the more, right? Okay. Um, when there is a deposit of the word of God in us, the Holy Spirit draws that out. right? And it can be very enrich enriching when the, there is a release of the word of God in the time of worship, whether in whether in song or not. You know, I remember going to a particular you know church service, and uh, and this there was this person, and uh, you know he was looking very serious, okay, very serious. You know, he was all suit and all that. And actually, I went to that church because I had to attend um, you know the baby dedication or something like that. So I was like, oh man, you know what? It's going to be one long sermon. It's going to be one boring sermon. And all these thoughts are there. You know, he looks like a very serious man. I don't know what's, what he's going to say, what he's going to speak and all that. But the minute he opened his mouth and he started speaking, okay, it was just scripture. You know, there was nothing fancy, no stories, no jokes, no illustrations, nothing at all. right? But he just spoke the word of God. He was just quoted scripture after scripture after scripture. And it was all falling in place. It was all connecting. And I was so refreshed. So refreshed, right? It was just with the word of God, just just scripture. Right? So when you know, when the scripture, which is you know, which is quickened by the Holy Spirit again, quickened by the Holy Spirit, timely, you know, timely word, when that is released in song, when that is released as an exhortation, right, for people who are worshiping, and when you're facilitating that, it can be very refreshing, very edifying. Why? But it carries the power of God carries the thought, the ideas of God, carries the very heart of God. Right? So using scripture in worship, when we say scripture, we're just saying you know, the scripture as anointed by God, as quickened by the Holy Spirit. Right? When we release that, and that can be very refreshing. But for that, we need to sow that word. We need to be in the word ourselves, right? expose our senses to the word of God, right? So that's again a preparation for prophetic worship. Okay, so if you're not strong in the word, we may not be able to determine, hey, what are, I'm sensing this, but is it from God? You know, there's a confusion there, right? So, so which means that, you know, when we are engaging in worship or when we are leading in worship, you know, this helps us, right? So this basic foundation, uh, prayer, praying in the spirit, being in the word of God, right? Reading, meditating, Confessing the word of God really helps us. Okay. The second thing is to be in a sense of expectation. Okay. Paul, when he's writing, is saying, you know, uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 1, pursue love and desire. So you are desiring, you are expecting. You are in the place of expectation. Okay. So you we cannot be passive. Passive means what? You're not expecting anything, you're just kind of dead, right? You're not expecting, um, you're not active, you're kind of dormant, and that happens sometimes, right? So it's like how your screen goes to sleep. After some time, you know, maybe a minute or so, your phone, your laptop, you, you might set it, right? It's not touched, there's no movement, it goes blank, or you know, it goes to sleep. And how do you need to wake it up? What do you do it? Right, some different things, right? Sometimes you can shake the phone, you set it in different ways, you touch some keyboard, and then it comes back to life again. Right. So that coming back to life is active. Being dormant, screen locking is passive. Right. So in order for the gifts to operate, especially when it comes to the prophetic, one needs to be active, one needs to be expectant in the spirit. Right? We need to be sharp, we need to be active, not passive. Okay? So there's a sense of expectation, there's a sense of excitement. God, you know, you're a speaking God and uh, you speak. Right? There's a sense of um, expectation. Along with that, sensitivity. Right? We come prepared uh, and sometimes you know, it, it is possible. When we, when we prepare ourselves, we become preoccupied with worry, we become preoccupied with care. All these thoughts come and they try to interfere, right? 
with our preparation. Like how many of you, you know, you wanted, you, maybe you had to share, you had to prepare, and you're sitting down to prepare, and all these thoughts crowd, you know, thoughts of, you know, did I switch off that? Did I switch on that? You know, did I keep the water running? Did I switch on the stove and forget about it? And all these thoughts come to our mind just then, right? So it is possible that sometimes we get preoccupied with this. Instead of the word of God occupying our minds, the thoughts of God occupying our minds, we are preoccupied with cares. We are preoccupied with worries and so on. Right? It is possible, right? So we just need to put those things aside, right? Um, and also, um, yeah, so practical things here, you know, how do we do it when there is an exhortation? Okay, maybe somebody who's leading the worship says, hey, why don't you just sing out to the Lord? Sing out what the Lord is putting in your heart. Sing out your words, your language, your tune, your melody, you know, sing out to the Lord. Right? Many times that happens and then everybody goes quiet, <laughs> right? At those times, people are not engaging. Maybe some, a few are, others are not engaging. So that's a time to really engage in worship and say, okay, I'm going to sing out to the Lord. Okay, it may not be the greatest of songs, it may not be the greatest of you know words or tunes or whatever, but I'm going to sing out to the Lord, right? So you, we engage in worship. Well, that's a time when we can also sing in tongues, right? You sing in tongues because we, in when we pray in tongues, we praise, we magnify God. When we sing in tongues, we do the same thing. And Paul says, I pray with the Spirit, but I will also sing with the Spirit. You know, He says, I pray with the Spirit, I pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit, I will sing with the understanding. So we can actually sing out in tongues. right? Just probably some tune, and you sing out in tongues. Well, and we, that is, uh, you know, you're getting prepared for it. And the Lord gives more. The Lord gives more. The Lord puts some thoughts. So even as you're singing in tongues, you're saying, getting a sense of knowing, hey, I need to sing about the goodness of God. God, you've been so good to me. You've blessed me with so much. And you're, you're, you're taking me. I, I know that, uh, you know, you've promised so much, God, but I've not seen it. But still, I'm going to just sing out and praise. And, you know, uh, what is that word that we learned about praising God even before we sing even before see that in see the uh, answers in manifestation, what is that word? No. <laughs> yeah, toda, right? So toda, yada is hands hands manifest. So toda is I'm not seen it. I'm not seen the answer yet, but I'm just going to sing in faith, praise in faith, right? So so we do that. So God puts, and we sing it out in faith and expectation. Okay. Um, so uh, another way to start singing spontaneous songs. You know, the spontaneous and the overflow of our hearts actually prepare and take us. Um, and it, it's just a practical thing. There's no chapter verse. But when we sing spontaneous songs to the Lord, we are actually singing from our heart. right? Whatever is there in our heart, whatever is the overflow of our heart, we are singing it. Okay, you, you, you understand, right? Spontaneous, right? You're just not singing the words of the song, but your your words, what God means to you, right? You sing out a spontaneous thing to the Lord, right? And when we start to do, you know, it can be a spontaneous, excuse me, time of praise, of just, you know, just speaking out. It could be a spontaneous time of, you know, singing out, right? It could be during the time of praise. It could be the time of worship, whatever. But this spontaneous overflow or outflow of our hearts is like a preparatory ground for the prophetic, right? In worship, when it comes to worship, when you're spontaneously just, it just gets to flow, the river starts to flow, right? That is what you experience. And then the Lord puts these thoughts and the Lord puts these, you know, many things, ideas and impressions in our heart to sing out scripture, to sing out and so on. So it's important to start doing that, right? spontaneous <clears throat> singing and sing out our own, our own words. Uh, sometimes it is actually also an emphasis on certain sections of the song, right? An emphasis on certain sections of the song, which maybe might be repeating. It might be singing over and over again, and there's an emphasis of that. And that prepares our heart, you know, for the property as well, right? So um, you jump in, you sing, and so on. 
Um, right. So we've looked at prophetic worship. We've seen that it's it's powerful. We've seen that it's you know it brings about so much edification, exhortation, comfort, etc. And so we need to we need to engage in more of it. We need to engage in doing that. Okay. So um, can can somebody just bring a guitar? You know whatever you've been using, so we can. Yeah, if you can. This is the strap also. So, <clears throat> so let's um, let's just try it out, right? Let's uh, let's do that. Okay, we have some time, so let's 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 um, you can connect it. Can okay. okay. Okay, just um you can just maybe keep uh, like a minimal volume, no? not too much, not too loud. Okay, so why don't we just uh, just talk to the Lord at this time? You know, just bless the Lord. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul. I worship His holy name. I sing like this. Oh, oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. Sing it out bold and strong. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul, and worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. Oh, I worship your holy name. Yes, I do. Yes, I will. Oh, I worship your holy name. Right now, right now, right here, no matter what, God. The name, yeah. Let's go. Stick, you know, it's just the songs of your heart. The songs of your heart, whatever you are feeling, whatever. The overflow of your heart. Just sing out to the Lord. Hey, yeah, yeah. You can just sing out in tongues as well. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, second day. Oh, I worship you. Hey, I'm saying day. Oh, oh, God, I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, I will climb every mountain. Oh, you cost me to climb. You cost me to climb. You cost me to rise up. You cost me to rise up. You cost me to overcome, God. Oh, yeah, that's sick in me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sing your own song to the Lord. Just put your own words to the Lord. Overflow of your heart. Yeah, yeah, oh, oh God, someone did it. You, your own language, right? So, whatever language you're comfortable with, just sing out to the Lord. Yeah, almost seeking day, yeah. 
hero must seek in the day. Oh God, oh God, oh Lord, my God. Oh, where can I, where can I go from your presence, God? Oh, oh, in the day. Oh, the mountain, the moon. Like wax in your presence, oh God, oh. Oh, I just sense that the Lord is giving us the equipping. The Lord is giving us the tools to to scale the mountains. You know, just like how to how a person scales the mountains too. He just goes up. He, he climbs up. But he's all tied down, he's anchored. Well, the Lord gives the skill, the Lord gives the ability, and the Lord gives the tool and the resources to climb that mountain. I know we, you know, we we know that the, the hills melt like wax in the presence of the Lord. And we know that we are called to speak to the mountains to move, and the mountains will move. Move. But I'm just sensing that the Lord sometimes gives us the skill and the ability, you know, to climb those mountains. And these are not. You know, these are not uh, difficulties, but these are opportunities. These are not difficulties, but these are opportunities. Yeah, you're calling us, you're giving us, you're leading us to climb every mountain, God. You're calling us, you're leading us, you're filling us to climb every mountain, oh God. You're calling us, you're leading us. You're filling us to climb every mountain, oh God. Oh, yes, Lord, to scale the mountains, to reach the very top. Oh, yeah. You are able. You are able, says the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And we say, we are able. We are able because of you. Because of you. Because of what you say, we are able. Because you say we are able, oh God. Oh God, our Lord, yeah. Worship this holy name. In the name of Oh, we worship your holy name. Yes, oh God, we worship your holy name. Okay, uh. Just want to just explain what happened there, you know, as we just started worshiping the Lord and saying, God, I bless your name. I just begin to see a picture, like picture of this mountain, right? And this uh, person just climbing this, you know, face of the mountain. I'm just thinking, God, what is it? Right? Is it difficulty? Is it challenge? And we know that we are supposed to speak to the mountain. But then I see this guy who's just, you know, wearing this helmet and wearing all that, um, you know, the knee pad and everything and just scaling and he's got, he's fully equipped. And I just sense that the Lord is, you know, equipping us, you know, equipping us and saying, hey, you climb that mountain, you climb that opportunity, you reach, reach the pinnacle, you reach the top, right? So, and I just, you just started to, okay, just sing that out. So, so, yeah. Anyone else who wants to testify when you, when you, you know, just started to sing anything that you experienced, anything that you sang in line with? Anyone? Maybe somebody who's watching online and also anyone here. And it was just a short time, but so so what did you do? Did you did you sing out a spontaneous song? What happened? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, just give the mic and then let's Yeah. Uh, a line came that uh, let my life glorify you, Lord. So yeah, like I've never. Yeah. So the line came as in, um, you, I mean, you didn't think about it, you didn't plan it out, but then you sang that line out. Okay. So what were you? What did you start by singing? Of course, all of us sang that chorus. Singing in spirit. You were singing in the spirit. Okay. And then, like, I adore you, Lord. I magnify you. Mm. Let my life glorify you. Okay. Let my life glorify yeah. you. And that was the line that you kept yeah. singing over and over again. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. Praise God. Yeah. So that's how, you know, sometimes um, the interpretation of tongues also works, right? So you pray in tongues, you sing in tongues, and then um, here is this, you know, the sense, this knowing, 
uh, in the language that you know, that you sing out, that you speak out, and and it's interpretation of what we sing out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you very much. Um, right now, still God presence moving, Pastor. Thank you so much. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. So as I was uh, worshiping in uh, spirit, uh, so I just uh, like spontaneously started singing that um, God will call out the things which didn't exist before to exist in our midst, and He will call out that. Uh, dead will resurrect the dead uh, yeah. our dead passion for him maybe the dead commitment dead surrenderance the first love which is dead before like is calling it alive and right so, yeah so that's a characteristic of god right like he calls those things which be not as though they were right so so that's something that is also you know expected us to do having the faith of abraham to call those things which be not as though they were and yeah we, all those things out. Yes. What else? Anyone else? Um, okay. Let's let's just continue to do that. Spirit on us, pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us. Fresh fire, fresh fire, pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us. Fresh fire, fresh fire, pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us. Fresh fire, fresh fire, pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us. Fresh fire, fresh fire, pour out. Yeah, just go and just sing out the prophetic, just sing out the spontaneous, just let the overflow of our hearts. You know, just declare the hunger that we have for God. Just declare the thirst that we have for God. Hey, 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 pour out, oh God. Oh, a freshness like never before. Hey, hey, pour out, Spirit on us. Fresh fire, fresh fire, God. Pour out, your Spirit on us. Hey, most in the Oh, no more Fire that burns, fire that refines. Oh, refines us like gold. Finds us like gold. Yeah. All the things that need to fall away, fall away, fall away now, fall away now. Oh, refining, oh, a sharpening. Yeah, refining. Oh, the things, oh, the things, the chaff, the unnecessary, the unwanted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fall away, fall away, burn away, burn away. In your presence, oh God. Oh, in your presence, oh God. And it was in the light of your presence. Oh, darkness has to flee. Yeah, yeah. In the light of your presence, God. In the light of your presence, God, yeah, we stir us up, we stir us up in the spirit, stir us up in the spirit, yeah, you have more, and we need more, you have more, and we need more, you have more, and we need more. 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 
We need more fire, more of you, God. We need more because all, there's always more, God. There's always more. There's, there's always more limitless, limitless, God. Yeah. We need more. You have more. We need more. You have more. We need more. You have more, always and forever, God. Yeah. We need more. You have more. We need more. You have more. More of the God. More of the Lord. Oh. Pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us. Pour out your spirit on us. Fresh fire. Hallelujah. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. I just pray that we would foster our hearts, Lord, to hear from you, Father God. Because when you speak, there is life, God. Lord, we pray that we will truly be hunger, hungry for your word, God. May your word saturate us. May your word, Lord, fortify our minds, God. Yes, Master. We just pray that you would take us deeper in the spirit. May we be in prayer. Not as a sense of duty, but God as something to look forward to, as something to fellowship, God, with you, Jesus. And even as we speak, and even as you speak, God, we pray that we will be, Lord, rooted in the things that belong to you, Father God, that you want us to walk in. Yes, Master, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hey, thank you so much, class. We'll uh, meet again next week, right? Bye-bye.